Hello, my name is Pauline Green and I'm President of the International Cooperative Alliance. And I'm here today to wish you all a really happy International Day of Cooperatives. You know, the United Nations gave the worldwide cooperative movement a real gift, a really rich gift, in fact, when they declared 2012 the International Year of Cooperatives. And what I want to tell you today is that the international worldwide movement has reacted and responded in a huge way to that great gift. And across the world, our billion cooperators, a billion member owners of the cooperative movement are celebrating the international year together under the United Nations logo and slogan as never before in the, in the history of the cooperative movement. And you know, our movement is a huge and inspiring movement. And I want to tell you a little bit about the way we're celebrating, but I also want to tell you that not only are we cooperatives about keeping cohesion in communities, preventing conflict in communities, keeping wealth and prosperity in local communities for local people, but we're also a movement that has a huge impact on the global economy at the moment. So our largest 300 cooperatives are together, just the largest 300 are together worth 1.6 trillion US dollars. That's the same as the ninth largest economy in the world. So we're already having a huge impact on the world's economy. As I said, we're owned across the world by a billion people and we employ over 100 million of the world's citizens. So in this time when the world's economy is pretty turbulent, the cooperative movement is not only strong and has a reach into every corner of the world, but it is growing. And they really relish the opportunity to share this international year of cooperatives with the rest of the world. And they've celebrated in a host of ways already for the first six months. Here, behind me, you can see perhaps the most iconic picture that's going to come out of this year. Ten Nepalese cooperators took the UN logo and slogan to the top of Mount Everest. The 27th of May, at six o'clock in the morning, they reached the summit and they unfurled the UN slogan and logo. That's beyond and above the call of duty. But here we are, cooperatives at the top of the world, and it's a really exciting moment to be a cooperator. And we've done all sorts of things across the world. Let me tell you about the Singaporean movement. They have been celebrating the International Year by publishing four books about cooperatives for children. The latest one, 15,000 cooperative men in a football stadium with the president of Singapore and the fathers were reading the, the second cooperative book to be published to their children, 15,000 of them. And all across the world, these events have taken a different nature. In Thailand, we saw 15 cooperative ministers coming together from our Asia Pacific region, brought together by our local office of the ICA. And what they were trying to do was see how they could reach out and increase and enhance the influence of the co-op movement in the global institutions. The same in Panama City, where there were, there were um, MPs and, and ministers from 13, 14 governments in Latin America, Latin and South America, wanting to do exactly the same thing. In Europe, we had a week-long meeting in the European institutions, in different institutions, working on different aspects of cooperation, agriculture, retailing, energy, uh, all these housing, all these key elements that are so important to people's lives. And these celebrations have gone on everywhere, everywhere across the world, and will continue for the rest of the year. Because the critical thing for us this year is to raise the profile of our inspirational movement, tell the stories about these wonderful co-ops. And later this year, we'll be publishing a book which will give 100 inspirational stories of cooperatives that have been born out of adversity. I'm here now in Cape Town, where the international board of the, of the global cooperative movement has been meeting to decide not our strategy for the next six months, but our strategy for the next 10 years to build on the momentum of this great international year. We hope that at the end of this year, we will pivot, we will just transition from a really successful, exciting uh, international year of cooperatives to a decade of cooperative growth. And our movement is working together as never before with huge momentum to help that happen. We're confident, we're growing in this financial collapse that much of the world is still mired in. 
cooperative and mutual banks and credit unions came through that crisis stronger. As our commercial competitors collapsed, their lending rates collapsed for ordinary people, our movement continued to grow. And over those four or five years, our asset base has grown, the number of and size of our deposits have grown, and most importantly for ordinary folk, we've continued to lend to ordinary folk and to small businesses while our commercial competitors' lending rate has collapsed. That's what the cooperative movement is about. And why? Because we are a values-based, people-led business. And our key objective is not to maximise profits for return to shareholders. Our key objective is to satisfy our member owners with the products we produce for them. So we don't have to look over our shoulders all the time at investors and at stock markets. We have to look to our members and make sure we're giving them a really good product or service. So we're about people. We believe in an economy that has people at its heart, at its core, and not one that is absolutely having by law, as companies do, to maximise their profits. So for us, we want to say a great big thank you to the United Nations for this year, and I want to say a great big thank you to cooperators all around the world on International Cooperative Day. Have a good one. Thanks very much for everything you're doing.